Last time, we defined velocities to be the derivative of position. Okay, so essentially, if an object's position is changing, then it has some velocity. Well, the next thing that we can do is we can say, all right, well, what if an object has a changing velocity? Is there any sort of quantity that we can define in that case? So the answer is yes. The um, acceleration is defined to be the um, derivative of the velocity. Remember, this is specifically the instantaneous velocity that we're taking the derivative of. Um, so what does this mean? Um, this means that we're going to have an acceleration anytime we have changing velocities. So what are ways that velocities can change? Well, an object can speed up, which in our everyday life is the way that we talk about acceleration. If a car accelerates, what you probably mean by that is that it's speeding up. But in physics, we use the word a little bit differently. So um, any change in velocity leads to an acceleration. So another way that the acceleration could, or that the velocity could be changing is if it slows down. So um, from the point of view of a physicist, slowing down is just as good of an acceleration as speeding up. Um, since velocities have a uh, direction, if an object turns, then that is also considered um, an acceleration. Okay, so um, when an object turns, we can calculate an acceleration for that, but that's a little more tricky conceptually than speeding up and slowing down, which I think you'll find are quite enough for now. Um, so we'll come back to the case of turning in a couple of chapters. Um, for now, we're going to focus on objects speeding up or slowing down. Um, and just a note, uh, physicists never really talk about deceleration. So in your everyday life, you might talk about acceleration and deceleration as opposites, but to a physicist, that's all just acceleration. Okay, so um, just like we had with velocity, we can have an instantaneous acceleration Um, which is what I defined above. And this is the same as just acceleration. So if someone says acceleration, you can assume they mean instantaneous. Um, and that is just dv by dt. Um, and we can also calculate an average acceleration, which we have to label that, um, for instance, with a average. Um, and that's just going to be delta v over delta t for some um, finite amount of time as opposed to an infinitesimal amount of time. OK, so what are the units for acceleration? Um, they're a little bit weird. So let's take it one part at a time. So in the numerator, we have a change in velocity. Well, change in velocity will have units of velocity. So that's just going to be meters per second. Um, but then we're dividing meters per second by a time. So that's going to have units of second as well. Okay, so meters per second per second. All right, so one way that we write that sometimes is just meters per second per second, um, which I think people find a little confusing because if you don't write it like I did in this first case, um, then you might think, oh, well, I can cancel the seconds per seconds and I just end up with meters, but that's not right. That um, will lead you to having incorrect units on what you do. Um, another thing that you can do is you can write this as meters per seconds times seconds, because if you think about what's in this green box here, meters per second is a fraction. If I divide by seconds, that's another seconds in the denominator. So both of the seconds are actually in that denominator. Um, and so the most common way that we write this is meters per second squared. Okay, so um, a second squared doesn't really make any sense, and so don't try to make sense of that. You should always just be thinking of this as a meters per second per second, but meters per second squared is a convenient way to write it. Okay, um, so let's just do a couple of examples where we find the direction of acceleration. Okay, so let's say that we have an initial velocity that is pointing to the right like so. And then later, let's say that we have another velocity, which is also to the right but larger. Okay, well, um, what I need to calculate is the delta V. And so, again, I need to think in terms of the pirate map rules for this. So I start with V1, and I have to figure out how do, what do I add to V1 in order to make it into V2. Okay, so if I'm thinking of this as trying to get um, V1 to look like V2, then the change I need to make is a vector that looks like this. Okay, so if I add this particular delta V to my V1, then the total of those two looks like V2. Okay, and then since the acceleration is delta V over delta T, and delta t is just some number. Um, the direction for acceleration in this case is going to be to the right. I don't know the length. It's kind of arbitrary. Um, if delta t was a big number, then I might draw my acceleration arrow really short. If delta t was a really small number, I might draw it long. Um, arguably, since acceleration and velocity have different units, they're in totally different scales. So I can make a be whatever length I want. There's no um, connection between those two um, graphical depictions. Uh, however, sometimes it's nice to be consistent. Um, and if you had multiple accelerations in the same problem, then you want those to be um, consistent between each other. You want the bigger one to look bigger and so on. So we have an object that's moving to the right with some velocity, and then later it's moving to the right with a larger velocity. So what that means in terms of words is that the object is speeding up. Okay? And when the object is moving to the right and it's speeding up, we found that it has an acceleration to the right. Okay? Um, so for another example, let's say that we have um, a velocity 1 that looks like this. So fairly large velocity to the right, and then a velocity a little bit later, still to the right, but smaller. Okay, so now I want to find the change in velocity, which again is um, asking the question, what do I have to do to V1 in order to make it look like V2? So if I have this vector that's already large and to the right, then I need to have a change in velocity vector that's back to the left in order to get it to um, 
the total of those two to look like V2. Okay, so this is like on a pirate map. You walk too far to the east, and then you walk back a little bit to the west, and you've ended up with a shorter displacement to the east. Okay, so my delta V looks like this. And again, since A equals delta V over delta T, um, I'm just going to scale that by whatever the delta T is, which I didn't define in this case. We'll just assume it looks kind of like this for my acceleration. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we had an object that was moving quickly to the right, and then later it's moving slower to the right. So that means that the object has slowed down. Um, and in this case, we found that that means that the acceleration is to the left. Okay, so if an object's moving to the right and slowing down, it's accelerating to the left. If an object is moving to the right and speeding up, it's accelerating to the right. Okay, so that probably seems a little bit unintuitive right now, but we'll do a bit of practice with this and hopefully it'll become a little more familiar as we go.